Hey, it's Joshua here with another edition of Mortgage Clarity. And today I actually have a guest here, Kevin Reimer with Goosehead Insurance. Uh, Kevin's actually been in the insurance industry for over 18 years. And uh, he's a guy that I've actually had a lot of my clients reach out to. Um, he does a great job. So I wanted to invite him in here today to talk a little bit about insurance and kind of like, you know, for most of us who don't deal with this, we don't really know what homeowner's insurance is, what does it cover, what does it not cover. So for that, Kevin, thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks for having me. And um, what should people out there understand about what homeowner's insurance is? So uh, home insurance obviously is uh, insuring the home. Um, so when folks are coming to you, uh, clients are coming to you, um, you know, and, and borrowing money, the uh, mortgage company is going to be requiring uh, that the insured is, or that the home is insured as well. And so, uh, you know, it's it's the, some basic coverages. I get a lot of times um, questions of what's covered, what's not covered. So I think the easiest way to uh, kind of go over a very high level, what is covered by the policy. Um, right. And so I typically explain home insurance as a uh, as covering you against a quick or sudden type loss, right? So, uh -huh. you know, obviously fire, uh, lightning, wind, hail, power surges, bursting pipes, frozen pipes, theft, vandalism, stuff like that. So um, that's kind of a general rule of thumb is a quick or sudden type loss is what the uh, the home insurance is protecting uh, clients against. Okay. It's not a maintenance plan, uh, you know, if the, um, you know, if there's something, uh, if the roof is deteriorating, and needs to be replaced. You know, it's uh, it's it's not going to replace the roof. Um, you know, if there's a roof leak, you know that kind of that's opening a different different can. But um, so that kind of stuff. So quick and sudden type losses. Um, and uh, again, we're not. It's not a preventive maintenance thing. So I, uh, I get calls at times where someone is saying a, a tree is leaning over my house and it could fall any time. And it's like, well. Unfortunately, they're not going to pay to remove every tree that's leaning. Otherwise, your uh, insurance rates would be even higher than higher, yeah. yeah. Um, but if the limb does fall and and tree falls on the house, then uh, we're looking at a claim type situation, so that sort okay. of thing. But so, what about like I always heard in the past, like acts of God? You know, is that a thing where an insurance agent says, "Oh, hey, I'm sorry, I can't. That, that's not covered because we see that as an act of God, and therefore it's not covered." Yeah, I don't know is if you'll really? see. Yeah, I don't is know that if that you'll see that verbiage in. Uh, in in a actual policy but uh you know again uh i think people can define an act of god as many different things so uh they probably won't be take won't be using that verbiage so much but um again that's where i come back to quick and sudden quick and sudden type loss okay. is um, covered so like when so for right. example the tree is leaning over the house big windstorm comes it falls in the tree. That's not an act of God. It's going to be covered by your insurance. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. I heard, I've, I've never personally came across something that, but I remember as a kid growing up, just these. I don't know. So maybe it was an old thing and an urban legend about insurance. Yeah. Is not no, I hear it all something. the time. So it's still out there. Okay. But yeah. That people that certain things aren't covered because it is viewed like a tor random tornado comes in, hits your house, not covered. Um, no, that that would be um, that would typically be uh, covered under the wind wind damage okay um so yeah tornado stuff we don't really have to worry worry about that too much up here in the northwest but uh tornado alley in the midwest i mean that's a that's a big risk for them hail damage you know okay. when we say hail here it's like uh these little pebbles where hail in the midwest they're softball size hail that yeah. do some severe damage so we get that every know. once in a while here yeah. actually in oregon uh you know that this what 2022 that that hailstorm in willowa county i right. actually drove through that town it was incredible yeah yeah that, that oh it just right. destroyed that little town yeah so yeah. okay so so th sudden damages so things for example if if you uh all of a sudden discover your uh dishwasher had been leaking behind um for years you didn't notice it until all of a sudden it fell through the floor that's not sudden <laughs> that's not covered because it was a slow leak over um, time that i guess uh that uh that would, that'd be what i call is kind of a gray area okay. there, <laughs> there there's a lot of gray area in insurance there's uh there's not a lot of black and white but um okay. you know so that that kind of situation um there are there are endorsements that you can add on to policies as well so when when uh you know you refer a client over to me for for some quotes um I typically include those endorsements on there as well. Uh, I explain them. You can remove them if you don't want them or feel you don't want them, but um, there are some endorsements that would cover some older water type damage um, okay. that has been happening that, that nobody knew about. Uh, an example I, I use is um, 
maybe someone did a, a bathroom remodel, you know, a year and a half ago, and when they were replacing the toilet, uh, they didn't put the toilet seal on correctly. So the toilet's been leaking for a year and a half, and they didn't really know until one day they go in and the bathroom floor is a little soft, going, what the heck is up with that? And they right. start tearing into it, going, oh my gosh. Um, you know, with, with certain endorsements, there can be some coverage options on that kind of stuff, too. So, okay. um, so I wouldn't say no, not covered, but, um, you know, it depends, uh, you know, what your coverage is and what endorsements are on there and that kind of thing. Okay. And in a different video we're actually going to do, um, this will be a series here, we'll uh, talk about endorsements and stuff. Um, but one of the things you talked about is there's a lot of gray. And, and, and insurance. So that kind of leads me into my next uh, question, I guess, that I think people would like to know about is, I suppose the quality of the insurance company you come into helps with how much gray <laughs> you have. Yeah. How, how does, you know, when a person is going out there and they're trying to, to look for an insurance company, how do they decide, you know, is this a good, reputable company that, you know, I, I always tell my clients, you know, it doesn't matter how cheap the policy is, because um, if you go to file a claim and it's a nightmare or they just reject it, um, what did you really pay for? So how, how does, a, how do they go out there? How are insurance companies rated? How does an average consumer just know, like, I'm dealing with somebody good? Right. Um, so there's a publication, AM Best. AM Best goes out there and kind of rates uh, financial companies as well. They'll give uh, their ratings for financial strength, right? So the ability to pay out on claims. Um, so that's one thing to look at. Um, every company that we partner up with at Goosehead is A rated or better from A and Best. So uh, that typically, you know, takes the question out of, you know, is the co are the companies that you're working with, are they reputable? Will they pay out on claims? Are they financially strong enough? You know, yes. Um, so that's one thing. Look at AM Best. Um, uh, ratings for financial strength um, and then it's it's as far as specific companies um, I to be honest I like uh, talking to not only for home but for auto as well the body shops um, the uh, the restoration companies the the people who are directly working with the insurance companies um, with the adjusters and that kind of thing so it's it's good to glean info from them and okay. say, hey, you know, these are the companies I work with, you know, um, what do you see? What do you see in your field when you're working with a, with a homeowner uh, who's going through a claim? Uh, which companies do you like working with? Do you maybe not like working with? Um, right. So that's, a, that's another uh, good resource for me as well. I've got a lot of contacts in, in that restoration uh, field as well. So that's, that kind of helps me too and, and point to which companies are uh, going to be a best fit for people okay. as well. Yeah, I think when you talk to like your, again, your, if you have a collision or, or if you just have a mechanic there and you talk to them about, they probably don't know, you know there's a lot of insurance companies out there, but they probably know who they really don't like. <laughs> right. And that's probably exactly. a great place to start. To right. At least cross those off the list. Right. You know, it's a little harder to maybe tell all the good ones, but you can really probably quickly find out if you talk to a few different, like you said, restoration companies, body shops, and they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't like to deal with this insurance company. Yeah. Uh, there's a, that's probably something yeah. to work looking into. Yeah. So. And as far as the, the home insurance claims too, um, I, I think, uh, you know, to kind of toot my own horn or the, the personal agent, uh, you know, I think it's very critical as well. Um, all agents are going to be different. Um, the service level that you're going, going to receive from an agent. Um, I, uh, I recommend that everybody call me first before filing claims because unfortunately claims are have consequences, both mm -hmm. home, auto, whatever. If you're filing claims and the insurance company is paying out on your behalf, there unfortunately will be consequences and consequences are higher rates. So when your policy renews the next year, if you file the claim, uh, you know, you, you will see most likely a, a bump up in premium and that right, kind of thing too. Right. And so I like to, I like to, uh, you know, head that off in the beginning going, okay, uh, Mr. Miss client, um, you know, here's your situation. Right. Uh, how do we see this in the next year, three years, five years? Uh, to does it really make sense to file a claim, or is it best to, unfortunately, just um, you know, pony yeah. up and, and pay this for yourself? Yeah, yeah it's small. Yeah, yeah. Five hundred deductible. It's a two thousand dollar claim. Yeah, exactly. Worth, and uh, and it. a lot of people don't look at that uh, that vision of three five years down the road. It's just immediate. And oh my gosh, this is uh, X right. amount of dollars, and I don't have that, or I don't want to pay that, and I've been paying the insurance for so long and and I deserve this I need to pay out I'm going hey I get it I totally agree right. but 
I want to make sure again it's it's in your ben, best interest long term, not just short term. Just because it's there doesn't necessarily mean it's in the best interest to use it at that time. So, right. and that's true. That's great to actually just reach out first, find out what it is, and then be guided through the process um, of that. So, uh, well, hey, I really appreciate you taking your time to uh, talk to us today about that. So, this is just again a high level overview of um, of insurance. We're going to have other videos talking about what flood insurance is, um, as well as different riders that you can, might put onto your insurance policy that might benefit you or might be a waste of your time or your money. Uh, and so uh, just check those videos out. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button so you can be alerted to other videos in the future. And uh, until next time, have a great day.